Number 10, Shipping Request Form. This item spawns a dropship each stage containing two items to pick from, usually containing a random item and a visible item, similar to a multi-shop. Stacking this item does not spawn additional shipments, but it does affect the rarity of the items. This is pretty similar to a Rusted Key, but unlike Rusted Key, this item does not get consumed on use, meaning the earlier you find it, the more items you can get for free, with finding it on stage 1 yielding you at least 5 additional items, assuming you don't loop or find a credit card. This is a great item to find in any run, I don't typically recommend stacking it since it's a green item, that scrap could be better utilized in other areas, blah 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 blah. So far, I haven't really gone over anything too special. However, this is an underrated items list, and shipping request form has a hidden mechanic in multiplayer that makes it OP as hell. While it's only possible to get one shipment a stage in solo, in multiplayer this is not the case, which each player that has this item spawning in an additional shipment on each stage. But the cool part about this is every time a shipping request form is found in multiplayer, it stacks the item for all players, not just the one that picked it up. So in other words, if you have a four player game with each person having one shipping request, you'll get four dropships, each with rarities equivalent to four shipping requests. I don't know if this is a bug or or an intended mechanic, but I do know this is actually quite a common situation. Getting four shipping requests might sound unreasonable, but with four times the loot and teleporter drops being green, this is something you can abuse to some degree in most multiplayer matches. Remember to split shipping requests as evenly as possible across all players and diversify that portfolio, kids. And number nine, Rose Buckler. Not really a ton to say about this one, to be honest. It increases your armor by 30 when sprinting, which translates to a 20% damage reduction, with each stack increasing it by another 30 armor. That's pretty significant since you'll be running most of the time. You can look at this more as a 20% health boost, which blows items like Infusion out of the water just in terms of overall survivability. Huntress and Mercenary also arguably get the most use out of it since they have the Agile buff that allows them to attack while sprinting. Loader is another character that's essentially always sprinting if you're playing her correctly, while Pound for pound, Opal may give you more armor, Rose Buckler is a lot more consistent for players of all skill levels and is definitely something worth holding on to. I think a lot of people, myself included, tend to overlook this item just because its effect is kind of invisible. With a lot of items, it's immediately clear how they help you. You can see something like crit activate, but gauging how much damage is being avoided is a little bit more foggy. And for that reason, it goes somewhat underappreciated. Today's video is sponsored by Cook Unity. Cook Unity is the first chef to you meal delivery service platform, delivering freshly prepared pre-selected meals right to your door weekly. Perfect for grandsons and grandfathers alike. Cook Unity connects a diverse group of talented chefs that cook delicious, inventive meals fresh every day in regional micro kitchens, not warehouse production facilities. Meals are delivered fully cooked, so all you have to do is heat them up. No more cleanup or meal planning. Cook Unity chefs offer up a wide range of meals with over seven different dietary preferences, including vegan, paleo, and gluten-free options. Look at all these chefs. They've got like a million, billion chefs. The only thing better than Chef John DeLucci's smile is his food. I ordered both the white truffle mac and cheese and cheeseburger from this wonderful, wonderful man, and they taste like something I could get in a restaurant. I also really like the mission style burrito from Chef Jose Garcia's. These honestly turned out super well. All the meals I've tried so far have been really good, and I love the variety they have. When I was making my order, I had such a hard time choosing what I wanted because there were so many things that looked good. And the subscription is super flexible and you can pause or skip weeks at any time. Try Cook Unity today by going to cookunity.com slash disputed50 or click the link in the description below and use my code disputed50 to get 50% off your first order. Thank you Cook Unity for sponsoring this video. Number 8, Crowbar. Deal 75% more damage to enemies above 90% health. This is an item I've talked a little bit about in the past, but it bears repeating just how ridiculous this item can be. Now obviously 75% more damage is a lot, but only being able to do it to enemies above 90% health is a pretty big limitation. As long as you're conscious of this, it's something that can be played around, and it's worth it to play around because it has a big benefit. The stronger the attack, the stronger Crowbar becomes. Let's take a look at an example. Captain's Diablo Strike is the hardest hitting attack in the game, dealing a whopping 40,000% of Captain's base damage. Having one crowbar takes this 40,000% to 70,000%. That's an additional 30,000% damage just from one white item. 
two or three of these can easily one-shot Mithrix. This was a very extreme example, but it's true on everything, with Loader, Bandit, Merc, Artificer, and especially Railgunner feeling this the most. It also combos really well with other damage items. Watches, armor piercing rounds, crit, and sometimes focus crystals, depending on the survivor, can add a boost to the already insane value Crowbar provides. Other items to look out for include Will-O-The-Wisps, Voids and Flame, and Shatter Splains. These exploding items can take really good advantage of this extra damage. Crowbar has by far the most damage potential of any white item in the game, and is definitely something you want in most of your runs. Real quick, if you're enjoying the video, consider hitting the subscribe button. Normally, I try to do some kind of bit for these call to actions, but it turns out I may have killed someone with the previous one, and that's not good. Some of you may remember last year I made a video with a bit where I tell you to subscribe for my neighbor Rodney, and I just showed some b-roll of an old guy on a mobility scooter, scooting around, nothing out of the ordinary, right? Well, it just so happens that I actually had a neighbor named Rodney, I did not know this, and it just so happens that Rodney died a horrific death a few weeks after I posted that video. That's not a joke that actually happened, and I don't know what to say except my heart goes out to his friends and family and I guess not enough people subscribed. Really what I'm getting at is if you're watching this right now and you're not subscribed, there's blood on your hands. What do you think of that call to action, huh? Please subscribe because 70% of people aren't subscribed to the chant. Nah man, subscribe because you killed my neighbor. Top that Mr. Beast Jimmy, little piss boy. Insane level 100 YouTube strats right here. All right, that's it, I'm sorry. Number seven, War Banner. Every time you level up or start a teleporter, you drop a banner, giving you a 30% boost in attack speed and movement speed when in close proximity. Now, I'll be honest, this is not a great idea, and I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like it is, but it's really not that bad. I've recently started holding on to them a little bit longer where I used to just scrap them instantly. This item is essentially four mocha that you get limited use out of. In the early game, war banners are actually really helpful. Risk of Rain 2's leveling system is really wacky with you leveling up three or four times in the early stages, but you're lucky to get more than one in the later stages. Late game, the only time you'll really see use out of this is when you hit teleporters. This is actually something I really like on proc characters like Commando, Huntress, and Captain. 30% more attack speed can translate into about 30% more damage, and Captain can get use out of the attack speed to delete more projectiles with microbots. The speed can also be really nice, especially in runs that are lacking mobility items, and while this is an item I usually tend to scrap, I have fond memories of it eclipsing the map back when I did the 24 hours on stage 1 video. I'm feeling a light to decent 5 on this thing. Number 6, Repulsion Armor Plate. Reduce all incoming damage by 5, blocking 5 extra damage each stack. Tired of dying from hordes of wisps spawning out of nowhere? Tired of clay templars eating through all your elixirs? Tired of burns and bleeds consuming your entire health bar? Well, fear no longer with Repulsion Armor Plate. This item is a flat reduction from all damage, as opposed to something like a buckler that reduces the overall amount of damage taken. Repulsion Armor skims off the top. There are really two main types of damage in this game. The first are those big chonker hits. Think golems, brass contraption shots, Mithrix's hammer. Large sums of damage that are usually slow and well telegraphed. The other type is smaller hits of damage. They don't deal a lot of damage on their own, but they usually come in large bursts, hitting you multiple times. Think Clay Templars, Wisps, Mithrix's Needles. Repulsion Armor Plates won't help much with the former, but will help tremendously with the latter. To give you an example, imagine a Clay Templar is shooting at you, dealing 11 damage a hit. If you get hit 20 times, you'll take 220 damage. If you have 2 Repulsion Armor, you'll only take 20 damage. On the other hand, an attack that deals 300 damage will still deal 290, not making a huge difference. This is an item that doesn't scale, so it's important to not overdo it. I usually aim for 1-3 to three of them in each of my runs, but not having any is definitely something I don't want to have happen. Number 5, Queen's Land. Every 30 seconds, summon a Beetle Guard with a bonus 300% damage and 100% health. Can have one Beetle Guard per stack. Coming into the second half of this list, we're starting off with arguably the most underestimated boss item in the game. When looking at yellows, we have some great options, from Perforators, Little Disciples, to the unparalleled strength of Shatter Spleen, but when under this lens, poor BG always seems to get the short end of the stick. But Queen's Gland is an incredible yellow item, and it's all due to a certain... bug. Dedicated apology video for that joke coming very soon. Queen's Gland is by no means a unique concept. There are multiple items in the game that have a similar effect. Zoya and Empathy Cores try to serve the same function, spawning in an ally every 30 seconds, or 60 in Zoya's case. 
That cooldown is important because it balances the item. When your little helper dies, it takes time for them to come back, so in theory, you don't have them up constantly. But Queen's Gland is unique in this regard. While the Beetle Guard is supposed to be on a 30 second timer, like the description suggests, Beetle Guards will spawn back in instantly the moment they die. This essentially means your Beetle Guard has infinite health. This is all due to a bug in the code that starts that 30 second timer at 0 instead of 30. Beetle Guard is a great little guy. You can't expect him to one shot a boss or anything crazy, but the infinite health bar makes him a great bullet sponge. Beetle Guard has genuinely saved my life so many times. One Beetle Guard can take like 20 to 30% of enemies off your back. It's that great. Even though he's not amazing at killing, Although, he's not that bad since he scales with the enemy's level instead of your own, so at least he's dealing damage proportional to the enemy's power. He's very consistent, basically being as effective on stage 1 as he is on stage 5. Coming in at the number 4 spot, Bandolier, or as I like to call it, Bandolier. 18% chance on kill to drop an ammo pack that resets all skill cooldowns, with an additional 10% every stack. This item is a great example of how misleading some of these descriptions can be, with most of the math here being laughably wrong. This first stack of the item is actually 20%, not 18, and while the second stack is about 10%, each stack after that gets progressively worse, dropping off hard after about 4. Now because of that, this is an item you really don't want more than one or two of. This is more than enough to get the full effect of this item. 20% might sound low, but think about the amount of enemies you're killing every run. Resetting your cooldowns every 5 kills is huge, especially for abilities that can kill more than 5 enemies. Now obviously this is an item that affects skills, this makes its viability vary drastically from survivor to survivor, but there really aren't that many this item is bad on. It's pretty universally good, although I do think there are some standouts. Artificer is the most logical one, all of her skills have cooldowns, so being able to reset all of them with one pickup is pretty insane. Engineer is another great one, just because turrets have a 25 second cooldown, this increases the amount you can place a lot. And speaking of long cooldowns, Captain's Diablo Strike has a 40 second cooldown, being able to reset that is a huge advantage. Acrid can spit out a lot more epidemics, Railgunner can use her special more, Bandit can stack more Desperado, and Loader can use more punches and pylons. On everyone else, it has varying degrees of usefulness, but on this half of the roster, it's honestly amazing, and I'm guilty of scrapping this item way more than I should. And number three, Bottled Chaos. Activating your equipment triggers an additional random equipment effect. This is an item I have done dirty in the past, ranking it as one of the worst reds in the game. And while it's certainly not the best, as time has gone on, I've come to appreciate this item a lot more. Under the right circumstances, this item can be a linchpin holding a build together, but it's entirely dependent on the equipment. The longer your equipment cooldown, the less valuable this item is, which is something I talked a bit about in the last video. Equipments like Gnarled Wood Sprite and Blast Shower let you spam equipment way more than something like a Prion. Speaking of Prion, you can actually spit out quite a few just with a Bottled Chaos and a Wood Sprite, and with a few Fuel Cells and Gestures, you can use more Prions than the Prion equipment itself. Chaos is also a pillar skip from Vase, which I've gone over before so I won't get into it too much, but that's a pretty big deal. But these effects alone aren't why Bottled Chaos is here. It's here because Bottled Chaos is something that very few red items do. It stacks well. Most reds really drop off after the first one you pick up, but Bottled Chaos gets big increases with every stack. Two are twice as effective as one, and three are thrice as effective. Being able to activate multiple equipments at once means they're able to combo off each other in ways that normally wouldn't be possible. You can hit an Ocular HUD and a Prion at the same time, resulting in a huge critted Prion blast, even if you don't have crit or a Prion. When you're spitting out Prions, Saws, FMPs, Gubos with drones flying around and missiles targeting enemies, you can cause a lot of carnage. Obviously stacking this item is a situation you're not going to run into often, but it can happen, especially from the soups in the bazaar and on the moon. Still not an amazing red, but it's far, far better than I initially gave it credit for. And number two, it's Topaz Brooch. Gain a temporary barrier on kill for 15 health. This is one of two items that grant barrier. Well, technically three, but rank code doesn't really count. The two main ones, at least, are Topaz Brooch, a white item, and Aegis, a red item. Of the two, Topaz is far superior, at least for the majority of the run. Barrier works as another health bar on top of your base health and shield, always being prioritized when taking damage. Barrier depletes by 3% of your max health a second. Topaz is most effective in the early to mid game. About three stacks of this item will practically double your health bar, making for easier teleporters, a more aggressive playstyle, and just generally less dying overall. Topaz is also a direct translation of damage to health, where the more powerful you are, the faster you'll be killing enemies, and the more barrier you'll be able to use. This falls apart a little bit in the late game due to Topaz being a flat 15 health and not scaling 
feeling like other items, but this is also offset to some degree by the fact that the late game has a lot more enemies, and therefore a lot more chances to use the item. The wiki states, high stacks of topaz brooch are required to keep the barrier sustained late game. As a result, the topaz brooch generally becomes outclassed by Aegis once the player has enough healing items to sustain it, especially since many heal items don't scale with the player's health. Which is kind of true, but it's also a little bit misleading. Assuming you have damage, you'll never really need more than 4 or 5 stacks, and late game health kind of soft caps just because you tend not to level up very much past a certain point. In really late game scenarios, I'm talking looping your run, Aegis can be more viable if you have a lot of healing, but most of the time Aegis will be doing this, while Topaz will be doing this. Topaz is one of my favorite items recently, and definitely a really underrated one. But finally, coming in at the number one spot, we have Bundle of Fireworks. Activating an interactable launches 8 fireworks that deal 300% base damage. This is one of the most slept on items in the entire game. First of all, let's just do some basic math with this. You have 8 fireworks dealing 300% damage apiece. That comes in at a whopping 2,400% damage for simply opening a barrel or a chest. And this doesn't even factor in the fact that they explode, allowing them to hit multiple enemies at once. And since they lock onto the nearest target, you don't have to do anything. This damage is essentially free. But this is just one firework. Things get really crazy when you start comboing it with other items. But before we get into that, it should be mentioned that these little suckers stack incredibly well, with the first one giving you 8 fireworks, and each additional stack adding 4 more to the count. This can create a feedback loop if you find a firework printer. While I don't recommend it, you can spawn infinite fireworks just by using the printer over and over. While this is cool, it's not exactly a great long-term strategy. One of the downsides of Firework is it only has a proc coefficient of 0.2, so you're not going to be proccing a lot of bleed or ATGs with this thing, but one item that ignores proc coefficients is Plasma Shrimp. So long as you have shield, every single Firework can proc a shrimp, almost doubling your damage. But this gets really crazy if you happen to find an ICBM. Since this item is applied to both Shrimp and Fireworks, it results in some pretty nutty damage multiplication. Normally, one Firework would trigger one shrimp, but now one firework turns into three fireworks, and each of those three fire three shrimp, taking you from one firework proc and one shrimp proc to three firework procs and nine shrimp procs. That was really confusing to read. Now, the problem with fireworks has always been that they're an inconsistent source of damage, since you can only trigger them from interactables. You can't rely on them during teleporters or during the Mythrix fight which was true up until the DLC introduced an equipment called the Remote Caffeinator that allows you to buy drinks, which is a renewable way to spawn fireworks from basically anywhere. Even without an ICBM or a plasma shrimp, having a Remote Caffeinator and a few stacks of fireworks can carry an entire run, which is why this is my number one spot. Did you agree with this list? What items do you think are underrated? And uh, if you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy a similar one from last year where I go over more underrated items. If you did enjoy, consider liking and subscribing. Big thank you to our sponsor Cook Unity and to our members for supporting the channel. You guys are darling grandchildren, and I'll see you in the next one. Ta-ta for now. Also, rest in peace, Rodney.